Hey everybody, this is Zoltan, and this is episode 5 of our Road to Glory series with Milan Juniors. Uh, this is the AC Milan's um, youth team, and we finished in 12th place in Serie B. Uh, that's actually pretty good because our goal was 13th place, so I think we'll get some kind of bonus here. Uh, probably next season we'll be shooting to get to the top of the table so that we can... Um, be promoted to Syria and if you take a quick look just for information we can look at who's coming down from Syria so the bottom three teams here right now are Genoa Cagliari and Lecce so they should be coming down and making things a little difficult I think for for us to win so that'll be a challenge, uh, so we need to do whatever we can to continue to increase the value of this team. If you remember in the first episode, we started as a one-star team. All of my players were really low, like 66 uh, overall or below. And we have improved a little bit. Uh, let's look really uh, quick here at one of our signings. Uh, which was an expiring contract. Uh, I usually allow myself to to have maybe one free agent or expiring contract per season. And this time I picked up Galvan from, um, I think he was from Cologne, I believe, in Argentina. So I did pick him up for a salary of 261000 and of course there's no transfer fee because he was an expiring contract so that'll be our new um, starting right wing next year and let's take a quick look here at some things that have happened we have re-signed some players I think um, this right back was somebody we were worried about because his market value was significantly more than his release fee so I had to re-sign him and it did. Uh, I did have to increase his annual salary quite a bit. Uh, so now it's up to 146,000. And uh, even this guy, who we actually just re-signed and increased his salary to 136, I think it went up about 100,000. Um, we actually just re-signed him, and we got an offer like the next week. He was not on the transfer list. I don't know. Pleasure Horn, which is uh, based in South Africa, it's the only team in that league, uh, apparently wants to buy him for pretty close to um, the release fee. In fact, I think I renegotiated a couple hundred dollars more, uh, yeah, 200000 more um, in order to get pretty close to the release fee because even though I re-signed him, his market value went up again and I was able to make some money here uh, this is somebody who started out as a much lower player and his salary started out I think at 30,000 so I'm gonna go ahead and accept this and this should add a little bit of money to my transfer budget so now my transfer budget goes up to 8 million and that also helps out my salary budget um, because really it's it's a fluid thing basically if somebody gets sold it just um, it basically takes up a space it's not actual money it's really just the actual salary budget because you can't transfer anything over back and forth between your transfer budget and salary budget so whatever you can do to add to that um, selling a player is actually a good way to increase your salary budget and I got another uh, offer here. I think this is probably uh, not such a good idea because his market value is $1 million and you can see the release fee. Uh, he has exceeded it. In fact, he's pretty much doubled it. And that's why the transfer fee is so absurd. And I can't really ne uh, negotiate much more because his release fee is uh, 520000 So the best thing to do with this guy is to reject this uh, transfer fee and re-sign him at a rate that I would be able to sell him perhaps and actually make something closer to what he deserves. Now, he is considering other clubs and I think it would be a good idea for me to raise 
his salary a couple of points up, so up to 69000 from where it was originally set. And you can see now the release fee will be over a million, so I'll actually be able to sell him for about twice as much as what the previous team just offered. So we'll see if that goes through. He's one of my last guys that I have who exceeded his his market value actually exceeded his release fee. So what we'll do is uh, go through. We got another guy here that I did have on the transfer list. And I just felt like I just didn't want to try to re-sign him uh, in the next uh, transfer window. So I went ahead and just put him on the uh, transfer list. And I got an offer pretty close to his release fee. So I'll go ahead and accept that. And that adds a little bit more. And going into the next season, I'll have quite a bit of money. Uh, this guy was already sold, so he's already added to that. And this guy was as well. Um, and then this guy's on the list, and he's probably I could get more than this. I think his market value is 143. His release fee is 167. And so I can keep that in mind when I negotiate. something a little closer to that, maybe 137. And so I'll increase by 22,000 their original offer. Uh, this guy already, we negotiated that and he is moving on. So let's see what happened. I, um, I went ahead and accepted this, so he'll be gone soon. Uh, this was the one I rejected, and I tried to renew his contract, so we'll see if that works. And I have another guy here that I just increased my counter offer uh, for this guy, so we'll see if that works. And so now we can advance time. So this is usually a good time to make offers when you're stuck on something that is not a game because you can always come back, you know, you could save at that point and reload and try to see over and over again until you get a favorable response. Uh, if you're on a game, that doesn't work because, you know, many times you actually play the game. So uh, a good time to do it is when you're getting like a, a manager's offer or something like that. Uh, so let's take a look here at our messages. Delgado, they have accepted that, the increase that I requested. Uh, Hibbard, uh, nice. So I was able to get him to agree to the uh, renewal of his contract. And that's a good thing because those are the two negotiations that I was just working on. Now I have a little bit of time, the remainder of the season, maybe about... Um, a little over a week to see if I can get any more offers for these guys that are on the list or even other players that are not. Sometimes they get offers and like this player right here, for example, Harrington is being looked at by four teams and that means he's probably got a lot of upside, but this is a really good opportunity for me to maximize um, even though his market value is 4.9 million, if they make an offer to me in this kind of situation, it might be closer to his actual release fee. So I'm hoping to get some kind of offer like that. I could really double my transfer budget. That would really be good. All right, so let's go ahead and accept this deal here. I don't think he's asked for any kind of bonuses. So we'll accept the terms and he'll stay on my team for next year. His salary increased 40000 And the other guy down here is a sale for Delgado. And it says here his transfer ha has gone up 22000 And there are not any other stipulations. So we'll go ahead and accept that. So that helps um, increase my transfer budget a little bit more. And the salary budget as well. Because he'll be gone on the 1st of July. So once that's done, um, we can move forward and see what's the next thing on my schedule. Uh, we have a club ranking update and then later on the last game we have is between 
our team and the old boys, which is the retiring players. It's a farewell match. And then there's the final day of the season. Let's see if... Did we get any other offers for anybody? No, that's just the scouting. So let's see if we get... And this would be a good time during these last two weeks to actually save the game and then if it doesn't work out, come back and reload because you're bound to get some offers. Uh, here's our season-ending uh, review. We achieved our goal. Feeling positive about next season. So this guy's feeling happy. Didn't get fired. All right, let's see what happened here. We got... Uh, Here's a negotiation for one of my players that I have on my list. And I could probably ask for a little bit more. 137, I think I could definitely get closer to the 170 that he's worth. So maybe 165. And surprisingly, I did not receive any offers for any other players, even though they have teams in contact, quite a few. And so that's the thing I'm a little bit surprised about, that that didn't come through. Maybe it'll come through here. Job offer. So I can re-sign my extension. Season objective bonus, that gave me 8.8 .8 million. So let's take a look here at, that went into the salary budget. So that was a huge boost because I have it set up that way. Uh, that's gonna make a tremendous difference now to have that extra money. That's a huge difference. Didn't even expect that it was gonna be that much. I have other manager offers, but I am just going to re-sign with my team. And this will be our last chance for me to sell somebody that I've got coming up here. I'm hoping that I got some kind of offer. All right, they've come back. They've renegotiated. So they want to take 16000 off the price. If I accept it, that's fine. I can go ahead and accept this. So I'll be looking for a backup goalkeeper in the next window. So I can skip this match. I have no need to be. It's not an important match. Just want to see what happens here at the end. Final day of the season. All right, so I'm interested to see what happens with his contract if it just disappears next year. Is he even there? Yeah, he's still there. Retired players. So what I'm going to do now is because of the fact that I didn't really get the kind of offers I was expecting, um, you can back out and then reload and you'll see really, you know, surprising that there wasn't a couple more people. And you can see on this save that I did earlier, The, there was a lot more activity for some reason. So I have the same end result. And I just decided to save. Let's take a look here after what I got. So this guy was also sold. And that was not expected. That wasn't even somebody I was planning to sell. I had just re-signed him but they offered me something 
um, very close to his release fee, so it's a significantly more, more than a million more than his market value, so I pretty much just had to take the deal. Uh, there's a few other guys here. Harrington, which that didn't come up at all, but you can see the transfer fee of $9 million is very close to his release fee, so I went ahead and just took that. Uh, this was a really good way um, for me to increase my transfer budget. Look at it. Uh, it's $21 million now. So if you reload, it's a pretty good opportunity for more stuff popping up. So I was able to sell more players coming into this upcoming transfer window. Uh, part of this might be because I have things set up so that in the general settings I do have transfer frequency is set to high. Uh, negotiations uh, are the same and, and the transfer budget are both normal. So uh, I can advance now and I might have a much better result. So we're pretty much at that same point just about a week before the end of the season. So here's the cut scene for the end of the season review. It's probably going to be the same. Yes, everyone's happy. So we're now ranked 367th, which is a definite increase. And I think the beginning of next season will be even better. Uh, but we were way down at the bottom. We were in the 500 range. So now we're at 367. That's certainly a step up from where we were. If you remember, we actually started down here below some of the Thailand teams. So we were all the way down. I think we were 545 or something. So that's a pretty big increase in one year. So the only thing I have here is scouting, which I'm not really focused on right now. So let's move forward a little bit more. job offers contract extension and I did get my same bonus one more time and that one went directly into uh, it doesn't show up here yet but it, uh, I have my budget settings for everything to funnel into the salary budget and so that's why everything should be now it's 9.8 million salary budget and I have a transfer budget of 21.4 because of all those players that I recently sold. So I'm starting the next season with significantly more transfer budget and salary budget than I did at the beginning of this season with this one star team. It was absolutely the lowest that it could possibly be. So I'll accept the offer from Milan Juniors, contract extension, and let's advance time. All right, so this is the match against the old boys, which again, I'm not really focusing on playing uh, against this team, but I do want to see who's on the team because that will give me an idea of the regions and Pepe for example I don't know who some of these other guys are Thurum I'm not sure Pepe Reina and there's the guys over there on the yeah not too many exciting players I don't know I was expecting somebody else I think it's not really that good well, we'll see. I thought that I would have seen um, some high-level players. 
And so I'm just going to advance, skip this match. Farewell match. So Maldini retired. I'm expecting to see him show up in my youth team as a regen. And at this point, I think I'm just going to save here. All right, so I'm going to end the season here, and let's see what happens. Um, I have my budget is at 21 million, and salary budget is almost 10 million. So let's see if that changes at all. All right, so as you can see, those are the three teams that are now in Division Two, And I think that's going to make it much harder to win a spot for promotion next year. So I do have uh, players coming in. This is the guy that I signed as an expiring contract, my new right winger. Setting goals, I think uh, getting promoted is obviously what they're going to be asking. Sixth, no, I think we can... Uh, so the only choices are... I don't have a choice of just getting promoted. I either have to win the league or finish in the top half or sixth. Well, I guess I'll just agree to sixth. All right, so I got all these departures, and there's newcomers into the youth team, and that's really what I want to check. So let me check the salary budget. Pretty much the same. I got a little boost there to the salary budget, and let's see who's in my youth team. Gillette. All right, it'll be interesting to see. Wow. Yeah, I was expecting to see Maldini's region in this team. That's very weird that that didn't happen. Huh, let's take a quick look here at their faces. Well, at least he has a real face. This is going to be my new backup goalkeeper right from the start. That's a good thing I sold that other guy. I can re-sign him for... Oh, no. It doesn't show here yet. Now this is just training information. But this is where I can see their faces. Uh, this guy was here already from before, and I think this guy was as well. Yeah, I was expecting to see more, some real faces. And I certainly was expecting to see uh, Maldini as a, a region. This is kind of weird. I don't know if that's a real face. I don't think so. Well, one way I can check is doing a search. But at this point, it doesn't look like I got a lot of interesting players. This guy, 
No, I don't think that is. So, huh. Let's take a look at um, an advanced search. Age 15 to 18. All right, so these are players from before. Hmm, that guy's probably a regen. This is a real player. Lorente, okay. Lorente is now a region at uh, center forward. He's a post player. Actually, it might be kind of cool to have this guy. Let's see how much he is. Oh my god, 21 million, no way. How is that possible? That's insane. Bruno Alves, well, I can actually just sign him. He didn't uh, stay on the team that he was on. If I wanted to re-sign him, oh, it's a transfer fee. That doesn't make any sense. He's not on a team. Oh, other. What is other? Here's a free agent. So, 335000 that's all I would need to do to re-sign this guy. A 16-year-old guy. He must be a real person, I think. I've, I'm pretty sure I've seen this guy before. And now he's a uh, region, 16 years old. Same with this one. But he's also on other. So that means I would actually have to pay $19 million, which would be ridiculous to pay to some team called other. I think that's a real person. Yeah, this guy, he's definitely a region. How much would they want for him? 15 million. Yeah, it doesn't look like, you know, I thought my transfer budget of 21 million was pretty good. But uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to sign a lot of people for that. I'm going to have to temper my expectations. How about this guy? A nice center back. 16 years old, cost 17 million. Yeah, I'm going to have more work to do to be able to get my transfer budget even higher. I'm going to have to buy players young, let them grow, and then sell them. Uh, but here's another one. This is a region. And 17 million, so I'm not going to get much of a bargain. Glenn Murray, look at this. Here's Glenn Murray. 16 year old Glenn Murray. 15 million. Oh, there's a guy. S. Brown out of Scotland. I think he plays for Rangers. Free agent. Well, 372000 and his release fee will be $30 million. So I think, I mean, that is one thing I, I have to consider. Should I go ahead and just kind of exploit this free agency of a whole bunch of players that must be in that position? Let me go back really quick and see if I... See, this is something I actually didn't try to do before. Um, but I have a whole bunch of guys here that I can just sign to the team if I'm willing to pay the salary budget. And they have a pretty high release fee, so they can be resold. And this could certainly be, like, if I really wanted to exploit this, 
this would be the way for me to revamp my entire team with a lot of young players. So I guess this would be the question is if you want to put limits on what you're allowed to do because certainly you could revamp your entire team with a bunch of young players like this who kind of hit the league as regens. I'm kind of curious if I change the age here a little bit. If there's a lot of other free agents. Well, he came up because this is his last year. And I don't know when that would happen because I think we're now in the transfer window. So I'm not sure if this would occur next mid-season or if he would come right now. That's kind of weird. I guess it's probably mid-season, I assume. But other guys are total free agents. I mean, here's a 24-year-old guy. I think he was probably a leftover free agent from before that I could also re-sign. 492000 And uh, what was the uh, release fee? Oh, there's a big difference. The release fee is only $1.4 so not really as much to profit unless it's somebody really young. Uh, this one, for example, is $22 million, so a lot more room f for him to grow and then sell him later on. Well, I think that that's probably, even though it does seem a little bit of a cheat, I mean, where am I going to put my limits? I think that this is kind of what I need to do. I need to bring in some young free agents, sign them for this price, and then look for somebody who has a high release fee. Like this one, for example, is $2.3 million, and I don't think that that's as good of a bargain because he's actually about the same age as that other guy that I just looked at. There's several good players here that... Here's another one for 2.6, which is not as much. Who was the guy that we were just looking at? And here... Oh, that one, just ridiculous. Five, 587,000. So there's not really much room to profit off of some of them. You really have to carefully... I can't remember who it was we just had in here. How about this one? 22 million. So that one, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I mean, really, his annual salary is a little bit higher, but his release fee for 22 million means he's got a lot of room to grow, and I'll be able to sell him later on and make a good profit. So if I really want to exploit this I mean that's really the best way to do it is look for players who have an incredibly high like this one's back to 1.9 million again even though his annual salary is 427,000 so if you really just kind of went through one by one and looked at any free agents and see what their oh uh, there's another one just 1.2 I, maybe that one was a, a strange anomaly but I think that's kind of what you need to look for or re-sign players that are already on other teams because his release fee would be a, a little bit higher 11 million so that's that's not too bad so yeah that's something to consider um, what is the best strategy at this point because I have stripped my team down quite a bit if I use this um, advanced search I might be able to exploit that and bring in a whole new bunch of guys as well as players from my youth division. As you can see, I've got only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players on my bench. So this will be a good opportunity for uh, for me to add maybe seven, eight players that I then will be able to start selling more and try to increase my 
transfer budget as well as my salary budget as much as possible and um, get ready for Serie A next year. So that'll be the focus of this season is trying to bring in those players and playing them, increasing their value and selling them. So that's our our goal going forward. I think that's what we pretty much have to look forward to right now. And we'll be looking for that in the next episode. So look for next season in the episodes to come.